A reading from the book of Kings. In those days, Elijah the prophet went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the entrance of the city, a widow was gathering sticks there. He called out to her, Please bring me a small cup full of water to drink. She left to get it, and he called out after her, Please bring along a bit of bread. She answered, As the Lord your God lives, I have, no I have nothing baked. There is only a handful of flour in my jar and a little oil in my jug. Just now I was collecting a couple of sticks to go in and prepare something for myself and my son. When we have eaten it, we shall die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you propose, but first make me a little cake and bring it to me. Then you can prepare something for yourself and your son. For the Lord, the God of Israel, says, The jar of flour shall not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, until the day when the Lord sends rain upon the earth. She left and did as Elijah said. She was able to eat for a year, and he and her son as well. The jar of flour did not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, as the Lord had foretold through Elijah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Father Francis with you. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to him forever. Well, today is the 32nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. And uh, the reading, I, I, you normally I read the Gospels, most of you know, but this today I decided to read the first reading um, because it does reflect uh, the Gospel where another widow is uh, putting all of her trust uh, in God. And so that's what uh, we see actually being played out in this uh, first reading from the Kings. And I will talk about that in just a moment. But it did say in the course of that first reading that they were uh, getting ready for the rains to come. And up here in Tahoe, you know, we're getting ready for hopefully the autumnal rains. Please God that they'll be coming forth soon uh, to uh, water our very dry and weary and scarred land. We've had, sadly, we've had way too many wildfires up here uh, in Northern California. And so hopefully, Lord willing, uh, we'll be getting uh, some much needed rain here in the next, uh, hopefully the next few weeks. And then eventually we'll be getting into more of our true winter season with the snow, when the snow returns. <laughs> so it's a beautiful autumnal October day uh, as I make this video. Now, I know I kind of gave myself away there, didn't I? Because uh, the 32nd Sunday is in November, but I'm making this uh, video uh, in kind of like uh, the first week of October. So I'm trying to always anticipate. I always like to have several weeks in advance. Um, you never know what the future is going to bring. And so uh, it takes a little bit of time to uh, put these videos together. And sometimes, uh, you know, being a busy uh, parish pastor, sometimes you, you don't have the luxury of being able to just say, oh, I'm going to make a video. Sometimes you have to do it even when you're not really uh, thinking that much about it or, you know, you don't say, well, I don't have enough, uh, maybe a lot of inspiration and thoughts together to put together something. But so be that as it may, make of that what you will. Um, I thought I'd go ahead and, and try and make a, a video. Now I'm trying something new today. I'm always trying something new. Um, those of you who are on, you know, that side of the camera, uh, probably don't really notice a whole lot, but every now and then I try some new new techniques and uh, new gadgetry, and today is no different. So, trying out the new iPhone 13 uh, Pro Max uh, for those of you who are techy, uh, who are those of you who are tech uh, aligned and into into tech things. So there you there you have it. Now, <clears throat> you know I, I like this video for for so many reasons. I like this video. I like this first reading from Kings for a lot of reasons. Um, a few weeks ago, let me kind of take a little bit of a step back and kind of share with you something a little more on the personal side. Um, I uh, contracted the, the virus, the COVID virus, and, you know, thanks be to God, you know, I, I survived, you know, I made it through. Uh, 
there's uh, there's some lingering the, the, the symptoms of covid were very interesting and there's still there's still some symptoms that seem to that to linger uh, basically uh, you the your sense of uh, smell and your sense of taste get kind of um, kind of muted i guess that's a good way of putting it and it, they say it gradually comes back um, but some of the things basically you know you can taste i can taste basic the four basic flavors i guess but as far as the the more subtle flavors and spices that's going to take a little bit of time i believe but i notice that sometimes some I, i'm starting to pick up certain aromas and fragrances uh you know as my as my olfactory uh senses return um but uh, the, the the reading today is kind of interesting and, 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 and it ties in with kind of where I'm coming from in my own personal journey. Uh, and that is that, you know, from health and fitness. And for a number of years, uh, back when I was uh, an associate in at Good Shepherd Parish in Elk Grove, I, I started a journey about eight years ago to lose weight and to actually try to get into shape. And I'm happy to say that I was relatively successful in that journey. Um, and I kept the weight off for a couple of years. Uh, and then I went to Chico and things changed as they do and had to kind of rediscover uh, my health and fitness routine in a new loca locale, which is, a, is kind of a challenge for a lot of people because, you know, uh, once you get a certain routine down and you use it every day, then it's second nature, and it's that's that's how you, that's the easy secret of how do you get uh, in shape and fit. But when you have to move and you have to you know figure out new routes and you know join a new uh, gym or whatever it is, uh, sometimes those things can be kind of daunting. You know, you kind of like, well, you know, where do I go now? You know, and who who do I exercise with, or how do I where's my where's my route that I walk or I run, or you know all these things. And you might uh, not be in a situation where it's uh, conducive to, to walking. Maybe you now live in a kind of a bad neighborhood, which unfortunately a lot of people do, and it's not, it's not, it's kind of precarious. Um, you know, maybe your, uh, your uh, eating situation's changed, you know. Maybe you're now living with people and you're no longer cooking for yourself most of the time. Um, so you have to be very careful that you don't offend other people by what they serve you and and, and sometimes maybe they serve you things that aren't that, 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 aren't that good. You know, I like this uh, reading because, you know, it talks about some really basic things. You know, he's, Elijah basically asked for some water and then he asked for a little bit of bread. And those are kind of the, the staples, I guess, of, of human life for, the, for many, many millennia. Um, but um, this, little, this poor little widow lady, you know, she's destitute and, and she's basically saying, hey, all I got is what I got, and it's not very much. But if you if you want it, I'll go home and I'll make you a little cake and I'll bring it to you. And then, then me and my boy, we're gonna probably just we we're gonna eat this little cake after I make it. And we're gonna die. We're gonna die. And I'm gonna get into a little bit of a uh, kind of a segue here and do a little bit about you know nutrition because I think it's important, especially. The more I'm learning post-COVID, the more I'm learning that, you know, it's really, really, really important that we have, we, we, we really are trying to the best of our ability to have a, a good nutritious diet. Um, some people say that you can probably um, lessen the severity of a COVID infection if you are, have eliminated sugar and highly processed carbohydrates from your, your diet. And I have to tell you, I really believe that. And the, the, the interesting thing was about six weeks ago when I was kind of coming out of it, uh, I didn't eat anything hardly except a little bit of soup and some juice, which most people probably would recognize as kind of when you're sick, that's the kind of things you do kind of stomach the best. And I, uh, I was feeling pretty weak and tired and fatigued. And somebody had said, what you need to do is you need to go and get a steak and eat it. <laughs> And at first I was kind of like, well, I was, didn't have much of an appetite for food, period. But later in the morning, I, I somehow started kind of thinking about that. And the idea began to appeal to me to where I was actually able to go and get a little steak, brought it home, 
uh, prepared it. <laughs> Instead of preparing a little bit of cake and oil, you know, I or flour and oil, I prepared this little steak. And by golly, I have to say that uh, within, oh, I'd say, you know, an hour to three hours, I, I noticed a real significant improvement in my vitality. I was like, wow, I feel a little bit better. So I, I continued to kind of stay on mostly a, a, a plant and a, a meat diet, no uh, carbs. Now, I mean, I know plants are carbs, but they're good, healthy carbs. Um, but no more sugar. I, in fact, uh, it's funny, a dear friend of mine, uh, we both kind of been taking notes together. And one of the things that seems to have been eliminated by the, by the coronavirus is a, a desire for sugary things and highly processed carbohydrate things. So uh, I have a, a kind of a natural desire just mostly for protein and a little bit of salad and it's, it's wonderful. So I think I've lost a few pounds I'm, I'm, and I've been greatly encouraged. And one of the things that I've been wanting to do for the two years I've been up here is find a, a route that I can walk without you know, coming in contact with cyclists because although we have the beautiful trail right outside the church, it's, it's predominantly uh, <laughs> you know, owned by the cyclists. And, and I hate to say that some of them are not very courteous or safe and uh, not only have I almost gotten hit by a couple of cyclists, you know, an accident, but nonetheless, I don't think they would do it maliciously, certainly. But uh, we had a visiting priest up here a number of years ago who did get hit by a cyclist and it injured him pretty bad. He had to go to the hospital. So I, I really don't want to um, injure myself. And uh, it's funny because behind these trees, <laughs> I'm gonna step over here for a minute, maybe the focus will come back in. Behind these lovely, lovely trees, uh, you notice that, uh, you know, believe it or not, there's a beautiful, uh, picturesque neighborhood right behind the curtain of trees. And I discovered it about three weeks ago. And so uh, I've been walking this neighborhood now, trying to do about six miles every day. And it's just been glorious, you know. And so um, I feel a bit of strength and vitality coming back to me after COVID. So but again, it gets me back to the, the first reading about this, you know, this lady and, you know, trying to create something that nourishes her and her son and now Elijah, the prophet. And I think that that's a, a good thing to look at um, in a spiritual context. What is it that brings, you know, true nourishment to us um, spiritually? Yes, physically, but, but, but spiritually. What, what is the thing that brings nourishment? Uh, and gives us vitality and gives us energy and gives us that desire to, to live for God, you know? Uh, that's a good question. And, and so, uh, you know, this uh, lady, I think what she does is in a sense, a uh, very real sense, I, I might add, she, she puts faith uh, into action. Uh, she kind of recognizes that what little she has, she's going to give back to Elijah, the servant of God, and then God's, then she's going to be totally dependent upon God. And I would submit to, to all of us, that's not a bad place to be. Um, you know, there have been times in my life where, you know, I uh, didn't have a whole lot. And, you know, I had to really be depending upon God for maybe that next meal. Um, I had to depend upon God for the next place I was going to stay. I was going to have to depend upon God for you know, all sorts of things. And the wonderful thing is that God always meets our needs. Now, He doesn't maybe give us all of our wants, you know, but He does meet all of our needs. And, and so the thing is that um, this, this, God, this, this first reading, I think, is really, really instructive and illustrative for us to kind of think about the things that we uh, need for nourishment and sustenance. And just knowing that you know, God is going to give those to us. Now, one other thing, I just kind of got an insight into this, and again, it may not make any sense at all, uh, but sometimes I kind of see things that maybe are underneath the text, as they used to say in my seminary days. But it's interesting that this woman is, not only is she looking at her, what she lacks, you know, she's saying, hey, we don't have this, this is all we got, period. And, and, and she uh, then equates it with, we are, we're going to eat this and then we're going to die. Well, when you think about eating, you, you think about living. You don't think about dying. 
primarily. Uh, and I started thinking, well, maybe, and then Elijah says, no, 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 you make that cake and I'll eat it. Now that sounds awfully selfish, but in many ways, I don't know if you can really, this is a stretch, this is a stretch. For you theologians out there, some of you probably think, well, you're daft and you don't even know what you're talking about. And it's probably true. <laughs> um, but I started thinking about it and it's kind of in a small encapsulated form of the Last Supper. And what does Jesus do with the Last Supper? He takes this meal that's basically predicting his death and he transforms that into something that's life-giving. So what I guess I'm trying to say is that, you know, sometimes, you know, people are very, very, uh, and, it's, and at times they should be, uh, disillusioned with the, you know, the church. Um, and I remember growing up, <clears throat> we had a grandmother and the pastor after our grandfather died, they, we felt, at least my mom and my aunt felt that he, this pastor took advantage of my grandmother and, and stole her house, you know, and, you know, we're told that, you know, and, and with Jesus, you know, we got to be very careful that we don't take, you know, he talks about the, the quote unquote Pharisees and ministers who take advantage of widows, you know, and, and rob them of what little they have. And, and so this is a kind of a really delicate balancing act. Because, you know, we want to always encourage ourselves and others to give what we can, you know. Uh, we don't try to, as ministers, we don't try to take advantage of people or manipulate people. Uh, but we all know that we have a, a necessity to give back to God, okay. Um, and so I think it's incumbent upon ministers and priests uh, to not take advantage of people. To, to, you know, if a person gives you, you know, a dollar in the collection, then God bless them. If a person gives you a thousand dollars, God bless them. But you kind of look at it equally, you know. And there are generous people. Uh, both, if both give what they have, let's say the person that had a thousand dollars, that's, that's all they had. And the person that had a dollar, that's all they had. They both gave, they were both generous, okay. You know, uh, they gave all that they had. And that's what Jesus, I think, is trying to get at in the gospel. When the, two, when, the, when the poor widow puts in the two mites and he says, this woman gave more than, than all the others because she gave out of her need, not out of her surplus. So, but we all have an obligation to give back to God whatever we can. Uh, but it's the, it's the responsibility of those who are shepherds not to take advantage of people. And so Elijah, you know, sometimes people might say, oh, there they go again, those ministers taking advantage of the poor people. Well, again, I think what, he, what Elijah does is he takes this, this, this meal of death uh, that the woman clearly saw, this is it. We're going to eat this meal and die. And in some ways he takes that, that, that meal of death unto himself. And as a result, the woman gives in faith, he receives that, um, that, that portion that meant to be kind of like a last supper and it's transformed into this great abundance, okay? I don't know if that makes any sense or not. <laughs> but anyway, it's just something I was thinking about um, today. But uh, that being said, you know, God longs to, to feed us. He longs to nourish us. And he, all he asks us is not to be afraid. Not to be afraid, okay? Well, thank you for watching today. Hope you got something out of that. May God bless you today and every day. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, amen.